got a very shocking clip from a documentary called The Significant Minority, published back in, it was made back in 2008 by some college students featuring the Westboro Baptist Church, and I was watching it uh, yesterday, and I came across a part that was really interesting where the Westboro ba one of those uh, spokesperson for the Westboro Baptist Church openly exposes pretty much the satanic theology of Calvinism. And, you know, some would argue, well, it's just hyper-Calvinism. Either way, it's a fruit of Calvinism when you get down to it. But basically, this Westboro, Westboro Baptist Church member, because they're, they're well known for preaching against the sin of sodomy, the sin of Sodom. And, you know, I'm, I'm obviously not defending that sin. It is obviously an abomination. But in this clip, the Westboro spokesperson literally says that God created sodomites, homosexuals, just to burn them in hell. That, that's the kind of theology of Calvinism. God makes people just to burn them in hell. And, and you can have Calvinists that will deny this, but this is the kind of fruit that Calvinism leads to. So watch this clip. Though their message is broad, the Westboro theology continually harps on one issue, homosexuality. What if God, willing to show his power and glory, now I'm going to get a little cloak will here, created your ass to destroy it? What if? What are you going to do about it? He created Pharaoh to destroy him. That glib little mantra that the f***ers love to put out there. God don't create no junk. God made me, didn't he? He sure did. He created you so he could show his glory by drop kicking your ass into hell forever. As a vessel that's that's one fitted for, fitted for destruction. That's the way God rolls, as they say. <laughs> Now that right there reveals a lot about the kind of theology that Calvinism can produce. Because remember, John Calvin was a murderer. John Calvin burned a man at the stake for refusing to accept his false doctrine of infant baptism. Because Calvinists, essentially what Calvinism is, it's just modified Catholicism. When you really get down to it, it's just modified Catholic doctrine. It came from Augustine, who was, who was into Gnosticism. And you, you, look, you do the roots of Calvinism. It's not only modified Catholicism, it comes out of Gnosticism. A lot of the doctrines of Calvinism are straight out of the counterfeit you know, false religion of Gnosticism. It's a Gnostic doctrine. But the truth is, is that that right there is saying, oh, you know, God made them. And then she uses profanity as well, because the Westboro, Westboro Baptist cult, they use lots of profanity. They use all kinds of filthy language in a lot of their videos and signs. But she says that, oh, God made them just to burn them in hell. See, that, that's, that's the kind, that's where Calvinism, now, all, not all Calvinists believe that way. In fact, I'd say the majority of Calvinists don't believe to that extent. But this is where, this is the, the ultimate, dead end of where Calvinism leads to. I'm going to show some scriptures that contradict Westboro's uh, heretical theology in Calvinism. Uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 4 to 6. Who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. Makes a bit of a problem for Calvinism right there. He gave himself a ransom for all. God will have all men to be saved. Compare this with uh, 1 John chapter 2, verse 1 to 2. He is propitiation not for our sins only, but for the sins of the whole world. Okay, It's a verse that makes a huge problem for Calvinists. They have to obviously tiptoe around that verse. Uh, 1 Timothy 2, verse 4 to 6. Now, here's another good one. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. Another one makes a big problem for Calvinism. 2 Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Interesting word there. He's not willing that any should perish, but you have Westboro saying, oh, he made them just to burn them in hell. Acts 17.30. Acts chapter 17, verse 30. Says... In the times of this ignorance, God winked at, but now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. Hmm. Not just the elect. And, and by the way, Westboro Baptist Church, they will even, they'll even condemn other Calvinists who don't agree with them. I've seen them condemn John MacArthur and, and others. You know, and John MacArthur is a hardcore Calvinist himself. So Westboro Baptist Church, not only are they Calvinists, they literally think you have to be part of Westboro Baptist Church to be saved. So even other Calvinists who would you know, believe in, in kind of their similar doctrines, even they are lost if they're not part of Westboro Baptist Church. So I mean they 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 they're even they even they, they even I mean they're even regarded as a cult by many Calvinists. So they take it to the extreme. But this is the fruit of Calvinism when you get down to it. And now Ezekiel chapter thirty three verse eleven. Ezekiel thirty three verse eleven. 
Say unto them, As I live, saith the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked, that the wicked turn from his way and live. Turn ye, turn ye from your evil ways, for why will you die, O house of Israel? Now I understand he's talking to the house of Israel, but you compare this with Second Peter three nine. He's not willing to any should perish. He's, he does not take joy when the wicked are punished, when the wicked burn in hell. Now it is righteous. It is a righteous act to punish the wicked in hell if they reject, you know, the free gift of salvation. But you gotta remember that hell was originally created for Satan and his angels. Hell, and then of course the lake of fire, which is obviously a separate place, was created for Satan and his angels. Matthew chapter twenty-five, verse forty-one. God was not intending for mankind to go to hell too. But when mankind sinned, we have that sinful body of flesh. We earn the wages to go to hell and then the lake of fire. But God is not willing that any should perish. He does not take joy when the wicked, uh, when the wicked die. You can also compare this with Ezekiel eighteen twenty-three and Ezekiel eighteen thirty-two. Also in Luke chapter 9, verse 52 to 56, Jesus Christ rebukes his disciples for wishing destruction upon a wicked village. He tells them, you, you know not what manner of spirit you're of. So I, I could go through so many other scriptures, but the bottom line is, is that this kind of mentality of Westbrook, of God made you just to destroy you, that is the kind of fruit of Calvinism. And now again, most Calvinists will obviously regard Westbrook as a cult, because again, they think everybody who's not part of Westbrook, even other Calvinists who aren't part of Westbrook are unsaved and going to hell. But... This is obviously the fruit that comes out of the, the cult of the, the Gnostic, uh, Luciferian, Augustinian cult of John Calvin. So don't be deceived. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.